However, let's now proceed to our location report on the making of the sequel to 2001. I suppose this could have been called 2001 2, but perhaps that's too many numbers for the average cinema audience to remember. So instead it's entitled 2010, or 2010, or as it's known in this office, 10 past 8 p.m. To set the scene, first cast your minds back to the mysterious events which occurred among the moons of Jupiter in Stanley Kubrick's original film. The sequel, which is set nine years after the disappearance of the spaceship Discovery, hence the title, concerns a joint Russo-American mission of investigation to find out what happened. and among all the 1980s special effects technology and plodding along in the footsteps of Stanley Kubrick was Peter Hyams. I love those films that take you someplace that you never get a chance to see in your daily life. And this particular film is, is the marriage of, of what is feasible, what is actually possible, uh, and what is also wonderful. I mean, it's, it's, it's about something that, that, that not only could happen, it's about something that we'd love to actually happen because it's so hopeful. To adapt Arthur C. Clarke's novel for the screen, Hyams and Clarke worked together via a computer link-up between Los Angeles and Clarke's home in Sri Lanka. I was, uh, of course, very interested in seeing what the screenplay would be like as compared to the novel. And indeed, he had done one or two things which I told him at the time I would have probably incorporated in the novel. Maybe the best way of collaboration is for the two people on opposite sides of the world not to see each other until it's all over. Good morning, Dr. Chandler. This is Hal. I am completely operational and all my circuits are functioning perfectly. Move your hand away, Bob. Ready? And tilt. Apart from the errant computer Hal, the only other character left over from 2001 is David Four. Bowman, played by Keir Dulay. Being asked to be in 2010 was like completing a circle. And yet it was just different enough from the original uh, to make it interesting. Uh, the quality of the character in, in 2010 is slightly different because the plane of existence is different. Uh, the character I play is no longer embodied. He's in a very strange state, so his concerns are quite different. You see, something's going to happen. What? Something wonderful. Got it? Every shot requires uh, the that, kind of technology and the kind of attention and the kind of manpower that the burning of Atlanta required, and that's just to have two people sit down and have a, <coughs> excuse me, have a normal conversation. This guy, Bob Harmon, this English uh, flying wizard, who's worked out this amazing system, it takes three men to fly one, and one to move you this way, one to move you this way, and one to move you this way. And uh, then you move yourself every other way just by shifting your weight. You spun around and twisted and turned. Just loved it, traveling about 20 miles an hour across the sound stage. <laughs> they kept telling me, John, just calm down up there. Astronauts in space, don't clown around. <laughs> As well as getting John Lithgow to behave in the air, Hyams encountered more difficult problems, such as simulating zero gravity. If you, if you correct the axis of it to put it there, it'll look like you're yeah. placing it there. Yeah. Gotcha. Marco. We have enough fuel in Discovery for a launch. <laughs> we have enough fuel in Discovery for a launch. You have enough fuel in the on-off for a trip home. You have enough fuel in the on-off for a trip back home. Will you? You have enough fuel aboard the Leonov for the trip home. Uh, <laughs> I'm so amazed by this. <laughs> Most of the material in 2010 is highly conceivable. In other words, if I were the audience watching it, I'd say yes, in the year 2010, that sort of thing could happen. It's about something that, that, that not only could happen, it's about something that we'd love to actually happen because it's so hopeful. And I don't think that there's anything more primal, at least in, in me, than, than the fascination with making contact. The idea of actually breaking through and making contact with another species. 
that's what the film's about. And, and space, I think, is the frontier we are looking to do that in. Past eight opens on March the 4th with a royal charity premiere attended by the Prince and Princess of Wales.